one thing. I don't know where I would be without God. We just grateful today to be in the house of the Lord again to have you worshiping God with us. We say hello to all of our Facebook friends out there. Amen. Share this. Invite people to come in and worship with us. For we are worshiping our true and living God. Amen. This time we're going to have our scripture read by our own Peter Davis. Amen. Good to have you back. Amen. So proud. Back to uh, I'll read it to you from First John, starting at the third verse. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. All these things write we unto you, that your joy be may be filled. Yes. Yes. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light yes. and in him is no darkness at all. Yeah. Yeah. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Yes. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Yes. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Yes. Yes. And the truth is not in us. Yes. If we confess our sin, yes. he is faithful. Yes. And just to forgive yes. us yes. our sin. Yes. And to clean us from all righteousness. Yes. If we now say that we have not sinned, we make him a lie. Yes. And the word is not in us. May the Lord have mercy and bless him here and do it of his holy word. Bless you for that wonderful scripture. Amen. This prayer time, we come here to give God praise and give God thanks. You'll come also to talk with God, to commune with God, and Him commune with us. And one of the ways that we commune with God and He with us is through prayer. And certainly we need prayer these days and times. Amen. We need to be praying. One thing that I said that I thought about that this pandemic has done, it has made us pray more. If we ain't been praying, we've been praying now. Maybe that's what God wants. Because he said, if my people that are called by the name would turn from their ways and, and seek my face, and, and then will I hear from them. We have to come. We have to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. So we come into God in prayer. We have many, many people, many people, even in our congregation.
but other illness is on y'all. Father, I pray that you would be a healer in a sick room. Lord, lift up, bow down heads, turn situations around as only you can. Father, lay your hands of healing on your people, oh God. For we need you and we can't make it without you. God, we know you to be a way maker. We know you to be a healer, Lord, because you've done it before. And if you've done it before, you are able to do it again. Touch your people everywhere, God. Every church that stands open in your name, I pray, God, that your word would go forth to let people know that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. We know you're able, God. We thank you for your blessings that you bestowed upon us each and every day of our lives, God. You just keep on, keep on blessing us. We just praise you right now. And on one of these all day, prayer in days will be over with. We'll be able to come here and pray around this altar anymore. But Lord, in the dying hour, we ask that you would stand by us, cross us over into camp time. But we won't be able to study one or more. In the dying hour, Lord, we ask you, in the name of Jesus, be with us, O God. It's in your name that we pray and ask you. Amen and thank God.
minister. May God's blessing rest upon your life. Amen. Not only is it communion Sunday, and it's also Sister Yolanda's birthday, but for the past 23 years, amen, I have been a blessed man. Your father. Amen. I have been a blessed man. Today, my wife and I are birthday and I celebrate our 23rd anniversary.
Noah man. And that's what we've come to share with you about this man. There's something about this man that's not like every other man. This man is something different. He, he walks on water. He healed blind eyes. He, he unstopped deaf ears. He mends broken hearts. Amen. What a man. What a man. What a man. Amen. There's no man like Jesus. Amen. But just for a few moments, we want to talk with you from the Word of God. From the book of Jonah and chapter 2 and beginning at verse 7 and through verse 9. Jonah chapter 2 in the Old Testament. Book of Jonah at chapter 2 and beginning at verse 7 through 9. It reads, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And I want to talk this morning about in confined places. In confined places. You ever been in confined places? Some people suffer from what they call claustrophobia. They can't. It's uncomfortable to be in places where you feel that there is no exit. You can't get out can't move around and do what you want to do. But I'm here to tell you that there can be a blessing found in confined places. Pastor, I don't understand that. I don't understand it. Like, how can there be a blessing in confined places? Because they are constricted they are restricting. They don't allow movement. They don't allow me to get around. They don't allow me to move. Man. And I stopped by this morning just to let you know that uh, for the past three months, we have been in confined places. We've had to quarantine ourselves. We had to shut the doors and and stay at home. And, and there, sometimes it looks as if the walls are closing in on us. Get tired of seeing reruns of Young and the Restless. I want to see something new. I want to see something different on television. I'm tired of, of not being able to go out and, and, and socialize with friends and family. Yeah, people can't come to my house and I can't go to their house and it seems as if I am confined. Yeah. Yeah. But I want us to let us know that there is a blessing in confined places. You, wanna, you want to follow me in the book of Jonah. Jonah found himself in a confined place. Well, if you don't know the book of Jonah, you've been around the church any time, any time long. Uh, you let me tell you a little bit about the story of Jonah. Uh, God had said to Jonah on one occasion, Jonah, arise. Get up and go down to Nineveh, that wicked city. And you tell them that in 40 days, if they don't repent, yeah. I'm going to destroy the city of Nineveh. Yeah. 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 
Jonah, Jonah had the clear instruction. Yes, there was no doubt about what God wanted him to do. Yes, uh, he, he, he could not have said, I can get to memo. Uh -huh. He could not have said, that must have been a typo. Yeah. Jonah knew what God wanted him to do. Yes, he, he knew, he knew what God wanted. But Jonah decides, as the book says, uh -huh. to flee from the presence of God. Yes, yes, by, by, by. Now, it, the, the book uses that phrase, that term, uh, to, that Jonah was going to flee. He wanted to flee from the presence of God. But my question is, where can you go that the presence of God is not there? David answers this question for me because David says, where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are right there. If I take wings of the morning and fly to yonder mountain, even there, you are right there. Your right hand holds me. So there's really no place that you can escape the presence of God. And in actuality, Jonah was really trying to escape the plan that God had for his life. Because God has a plan for all of our lives. His plan may not be the plan that he has for me, may not be the plan that he has for you. But he has a plan for all of us. And I don't know, but, but Jonah, he's dead in the flesh, but there still are some Jonas walking around here. Yes, who God has put in their minds and in their hearts his plan for their life. And instead of surrendering and humbling themselves, they are running from the plan God has for your life. Running from it. Yeah. Well, you know, when I get myself together, yeah. when I get things in order, yeah. listen, the devil will always make sure you don't get yourself together. Right. You be gonna always make sure that you don't get things straightened out and right. get things fixed up because he knows if you are if he allows that to happen, uh -huh. you gonna do what God has promised. Yeah. 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 So Jonah, Jonah. Decides that I, I look, Lord, I, 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 I love you and all that good stuff, but hey, you know, them Ninevites uh -huh. is some crazy folks. Yeah. Yes, they are some evil hearted people. Uh -huh. Jonah had to deal with some personal prejudices, yes, he had to deal with some personal issues, uh -huh. and he didn't like the people that God was sending him to. Yes, so he decides. And anytime you run away from the will of God, you pay the consequences. Because the Bible said that when he decided not to do what God wanted him to do, he got on a ship and paid his own fat. Yes, you do pay when you don't do what God said. You end up paying far more than you're able to spend. You end up staying there longer than you intended to stay. He gets on board the ship going not to Nineveh, but to Tarsus in the wrong direction. He got on the cruise line that day, not knowing what was going to happen. And the Bible says he went down into the bottom of the ship. And notice if you're in the, in the scripture, you notice God gives him the command uh -huh. and he goes down. Yeah. When you don't do what God wants you to do, ain't nowhere else to go but down. Yeah. He goes down to the ship yeah. and he goes down into the hull of the ship yeah. and he has the nerve, the audacity, the humiliated God yeah. to go to sleep on ship. Well, God ain't worried about that. 
Because I don't care how far you run. God knows how to catch up with you. God is already there. He's already ahead of you. And he knows how to put stuff in the way to make you surrender to doing his will. He don't always want to have to make you do anything. But he wants to let us know that without me, you can do nothing. What your plans are for life, for your life, God says, I got a greater plan for you. Plans to bless you, to give you a hope, and to give you a future. But as long as you're working with your plan, your plans don't work with God. God knows how to circumvent yes, your plan. Yes, and what you wanted in life, uh -huh. God knows what's best yeah. for all of us. Yeah. 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 So John gets on board and he goes and he, he finds that during his travel away from God, mm -hmm. away from the very one that he really needed, yes, he finds that a storm develops uh -huh. on the sea. Uh -huh. And many of us are running from God and we're wondering why storms are going on all around. Uh -huh. Trouble is on every hand because yeah. we, we have to surrender to God's will. Yeah. Yeah. But God knows how to get your attention. Yeah. Down in the sea, in that ship, he is Jonah asleep. Yes. While the wind is boisterous and, and the waves are dashing and everybody's praying, calling on their God asking God to have mercy on them. Spare us from this storm. Listen, just when you do wrong, it not only affects you, but it affects the people that are around you. Listen to me, somebody. You don't want to wear your mask. It ain't just for you, but it's for the folk that's around you. Protect them. I won't go off on that. But but he gets he gets the news. The captain comes and says to him, Man, are you crazy? All this weather going on, all this storm, and you down here sleep. Minding your own bed. Jonah said, Well, I know why all this is happening. Some of us, we know why we in trouble. We know we have left God out of our lives. We know we done put God on the shelf. That's good for Easter and Christmas. I don't need him the rest of the year. Uh -huh. But God been take care of you all your life. All right. All right. Jonah said, well, if you all would just throw me overboard, My Lord. you all can go on about your business. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't really want to do this. Because uh -huh. they, they knew that throwing this man over, he was going to drown. Yeah. He was going to die. But the storm kept getting stronger and stronger. And sometimes family members sometimes have to cut you off because you done caused so much trouble in the home. Family members, as, as much as it hurts them to have to cut you off, sometimes you got to practice tough love sometimes. Sometimes you just got to put your foot down. Yeah. Because if I let you come in here yeah. and do whatever you want to do, yeah. you're going to tear all of what I tried to build here. Yeah. Yeah. So they decided to throw Jonah overboard. Yeah. And it was there that Jonah found himself in a confined space. For the Bible says that God prepared a great fish that would swallow Jonah. And Jonah found himself in a confined place. He couldn't get out. He just had to ride it out. And I know we've been stuck in our home for three months. And we can't get out. And we, you know, they opened up a few things. And, and, and some of us are going crazy because they don't open up stuff. And we're not adhering to what they're telling us to do. And it's not being afraid or not living in fear, but it's being smart. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's being smart. Yes, sir. If I know that 
there are lions out there on the street. The dumbest thing to do is would be to go out there and see for myself. And maybe I, you know, maybe if the lions see me, maybe they'll let me alone. But no, the, the smartest thing to do is wait till they pass. And once they pass, then try to venture. And that's what we need to do in this life. Stay in the confined place until this has passed. Because our actions not only affect us, but it affects those that are around us. And though, and I know you're young, I know young folk feel like, you know, because I'm young, you know, I, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm invincible. I'm Superman. I'm Superwoman. Yes, that may be well true that you are uh, immune to this or, or you are asymptomatic. But when you go and get off in crowds, you don't know who there has it. And now it's given to you, and you bringing it back to grandma and mama and daddy, affecting everybody else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So my brothers and sisters, we need to appreciate the confined place. Jonah found himself in the belly of a great fish. He was confined. There he was in that in that fish's bed. But it was there that he got it right with God. Yes, sir. Had it not happened, had it not been for the confined place, yeah. Jonah would have kept right on going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so here in the text it says, Jonah said, that being in that fish's bed, yes, yes. he said, I was in the great deep. Yes, I had seaweed. Yes, sir wrapped around my head. All right. Now before we get to chapter 2, uh -huh. in chapter 1, it never mentions Jonah ever prayed. Okay. It, Jonah didn't even take time to pray right. in chapter 1. All right. But all just moved a chapter over. Yeah. And the book said, Jonah said, I prayed. God know how to get you on your knees when you're in the confined place. He knows how to make you bow your knee. And Mr. Trump, I want to tell you, God knows how to get you on your knees. Yeah, yeah, so he, in the belly of this great fish, he prayed. And I ain't talking about he, he ain't down there talking about Talking about now I laid me down to sleep. Okay, okay, okay. He down there talking about bless me, my family, and all. No, this man is calling on Almighty God. Because if God don't bring him through this, he will not survive. Have you ever been there? When you had an issue in your life, and if God didn't intervene, you were going down for the last time. Yes, yes, yeah, God knows how to get you. He knows how and he knows where to place you yes, in the confined area, in the confined place. And he said it was there with my soul fed yes. when I was about to give up. Yes, when everything else had turned against me. This, this fish was, was going down in the deep uh -huh. and was carrying me down in the deep. Yes, yes. The deeper he go, the further I was with because I couldn't get out. Yes, and he wasn't going to let me get out there. And nothing else but water and seaweed yes. was coming in. Yes, yes. Trouble after trouble, yes. all because I shouldn't have made that turn that I made back then. Yes. So it's while he was in that confined place, yes, he said, my soul fainted within me. But it was in that confined place. Jonah says, I remembered the Lord. Sometimes God got to get you in the confined place in order for your memory to kick in. Sometimes we, we are people who 
have spiritual amnesia. Yeah. And we forget that God brought us out of one situation. Uh -huh. And once we are placed back on our feet, we forget the bridge yeah. that brought us over. Yeah. Yeah. And God has a way of allowing us to experience trouble and tragedy in our line in order to get us to remember him. Jonah said it was in, while I was in that fish's belly, there I remembered God. And my prayer came unto his holy temple. Jonah said I was in that belly of that fish and I was praying. I was having prayer meeting in the bottom of the fish's belly. Listen, God don't care where you pray. He don't care what you pray as long as you pray. Yeah. We look at the posture of prayer. Uh -huh. And you, you can't pray unless you're really on your knees. It don't matter if you're on your knees. No, it don't matter if you're laying in your bed. If you fall prostrate on the ground. It don't matter. Just call on his name. When you call on him. And you're sincere in your call. God will answer. But I want to let you know about this next verse. It says in verse 8 that they, here's, here's what he remembered. He remembered the Lord. And he says, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What is he trying to get us to know? He's telling us to stop trusting in lies. All right. We got a 45 that don't do nothing else but lie. Lie about this and lie about that. And the, and the bad thing about it is that there are folk who are trusting in his life. But I'm telling you, as Dr. King said, no lie lives forever. Because truth crushed the earth will rise again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he says, those that observe, those that will observe mean those who, who, who protect lying vanity. Yes, Empty yes, lie. Yes, Empty yes, promise. Yes, I'm going to do this for you and I'm going to take care of that for you. Yes, just trust it. And then I only just he telling the lie but they are upholding him in his life. He saying to us, don't trust in lies. Yeah, yeah. Jonah said, I trusted in the lie that I could get away from God. Mm. That I could get away from God's plan. Don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Jonah said, don't believe that because he said, they forsake their own mercy. Yeah. When you believe a lie, what you've been looking for, uh -huh. you are running away from is what you really need. That's right. That's right. The very person that you're running from is the very person that we really need. Well, what was his result? What did Jonah learn in the confined place? Because you learn some stuff when you're in the confined place. These past few months, the things that I have learned about God is that God is a way man. Yeah. Uh -huh. When they were threatened on our job to furlough us yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and tell us that we don't have to take a furlough, uh -huh. cut in pay, yeah. Yeah. won't be paid for our work. Yeah. And I'm telling you, God makes a way yeah. Yeah. out of nowhere. There was some that volunteered to take the furlough. Uh -huh. yeah. But you don't always jump yeah. at the very first sight of things. Uh -huh. Don't always get scared at the first. Just wait. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said they that wait yeah. on the Lord yeah. shall renew their strength. Yeah. And a few weeks later, yeah. the same people said furlough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now said we have withdrawn the furlough. You don't have to take the furlough. God will make a way 
talk with you. We will, we will commune together. Give you the word of God. Letting you know that God said, I love you. I love you. Make some difference what you've done. Don't make some difference how long you've done it. God said, I love you. All you got to do is surrender to me.
let us eat all of it. And after the same manner, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he said to his disciples, Take, drink. This cup represents my blood that is shed for the remission of sin. Let us drink all of it. Go out singing, that's us. Jesus went to Calvary. 